Hello everyone. Now welcome to a video on data stores and leader stats. Now today we are going to be going about how to save data and how to set up leader stats as well. Now I've not actually done um done anything in this project yet. This is a brand new project. So we're going to start this from scratch. Okay, so to start off we want to go to game settings. So to get to to navigate to game settings, you want to click home, game settings. Next, you'll see this pop up up here, and you want to click on security. Next, you'll see all of these. I don't know if all of these will be enabled, but what we're focusing on today is enable studio access to API services. Make sure you turn that on. Press save, and it should disappear. Now we're going to click on view explorer and we're going to open up the workspace now actually i'm going to do this in server script service so i'm going to open up so i'm going to hover over server script service click this little add now this is basically just where you hold all your server scripts so and then i'm just going to add in a script and then we can right click the script rename and we'll call this leader stats now this will just be setting up our data you may already know how to do this but to do this, all we've got to say is game.players.playerAdded colon connect function open the brackets and put plr or player in and what this is saying is that whatever chunk of code is in here so if we say code uh, that is not how you do it, that's python, sorry, <laughs> wrong programming language so let's say code uh, let's actually no, let's say we said print hello in here what this is actually doing is whenever a player joins or connects to the game it's gonna print hello into the output now this player is simply just the player that's joining that's basically all you need to know now what we're gonna say is local which is defining a new variable within this um, function scope and we're gonna call this local leader stats equals new so leader stats is just the name of the variable equals new I'm oh sorry no in equals instance dot new which ba basically creates a brand new instance which in this case is going to be quotation marks or speech marks and then uh, we want to create a folder in here and after this we can just put a comma and then plr and then that will put it inside of the player that's just joined the game next we'll say leader stats dot name equals leader stats and that has to be all lowercase by the way and then that'll basically give it a name that's basically that now we'll say local and we'll call this number this this is going to be your currency let's call this money actually local money equals instance dot new and this is going to be an int value which stands for integer value and this is going to be parented inside of the leader stats folder which means it was going to go inside of that folder we've just made up here okay next we're going to say money dot name is equal to uh you can call it cash you can call it money whatever i'm just going to call it money and money dot value equals zero by default so i'm going to set it to zero so that's going to be what however much um like you want the player to start with okay now we can close the leader stats we're not going to need it now if we press test and then click play you'll see that when we load in it actually says top right money zero and if you don't see that you can press tab and you'll see it money zero now let's stop this now what, what about saving this because let's actually say we went down to this if we pressed f to uh, f oh it's one of these buttons f f9 um and then clicked server and say so we typed in no there's actually a quick way of doing if we, if we go up to this test and click on current client and as you can see it's then sent us to the server if we then click on uh, players and then your player name leader stats and money and then click view and properties we can set that to 10 and then click test and click the current server which will then change it to the client and as you can see we've now got 10 money now what if we want to save that because as you can see, if we then restart the um, the project, it goes back down to zero. So let's now figure out how to save that. 
Let's create a brand new script inside of Scurvis script service and we'll rename this to data store. Now data store is basically what uh, is Roblox uses to save uh, data. Now I'll get rid of this print hello world and what we want to type in, it's going to seem a bit complicated but I'll explain it, local data store, so we are creating a variable called data store, equals game colon, oh not two, colon get service, then quotation marks data store service, it should pop up there, and then colon get data store, And then in here is going to be your data store name. So I'm going to call this store dash one or something like that. It can be called anything really. Just bear in mind if you change the name of this uh, data store, it will wipe all the data. Just so you know. So be careful. So do not change. Now you can call this name whatever you want, but as soon as you release, I don't recommend you change unless you want to wipe everyone's data. Now say I rename this to store two. Uh, I could always revert the data back to store one by simply changing it. It will always save. But just do be careful. Now, what this is basically saying is it's getting the data store service so our game can actually access it here. And then inside of this data store service, we're basically getting the data store with this name, which we've just come up with. Right, next, we actually need to retrieve the data store. Now... This is basically well. This is basically what we've just done. So, this is kind of what we're doing. So, what we've so this is retrieving the data store, and that's basically that. So, anyway, next we need to create a couple of functions. We'll make actually we'll do one thing. So, next what we're going to do is say game dot players dot player added colon connect function player plr so the exact same thing again oh dear what's happened here there we go but this time inside this function we're going to say local key equals user underscore dot dot player dot user id and that is user with us uh this should be plr uh, this, should, this should be user with a lowercase u and an uppercase i. And this is basically going to create a key variable with the user's id. Next we'll say data store colon get a sync key. And this is basically getting the data of this key right here. That's kind of the best way of describing that. Now... This is going to become a bit more complicated. Now, from here, we've got to branch off and make a few more complicated things. So, okay, now, what I'm going to do is just step back a minute, and before we actually start getting a bit more advanced, I'm going to open the leader set script again, and I'm going to make another new variable. So I'm going to call this one, rather than money, I'm going to call this one rebirth. So local rebirths equals instance dot new. And then we'll say uh, int value, comma, data stats. We're basically just typing the same up here as what we, uh, the same as what we've written above. And here we'll just say rebirths dot name equals. And this one will obviously be rebirths. And the rebirths dot value is equal to zero. There we go. Just so now we've got more than one thing to save, so I can kind of demonstrate. Now, with this in mind, uh, our final result should look something like this. Now, this may look like quite overwhelming, but I'll go through it step by step. So, as you can see, this top line we've already written up here. This um, we've kind of made a start here, but we've got some differences rather than having all this key thing. Now this is a slightly uh, slightly edited version of what we've got here. I'm just trying to simplify it a bit more. So what we'll actually do is, for now, just above this local key, we're gonna add a weight. By the way, I'm gonna keep this down here so you lot can reference it. If you just, um, so if you wanna see what, it, it, like, if you wanna see what it looks like when it's done, 
at the bottom you can or if you just want to go ahead and ignore me explaining it you can but I'm just going to leave it down here for you lots of reference now as you can see we've got this local key is equal to the user underscore player dot user ID so we created our key and what this wait does is basically stop the um, stop it from the loading the data while, um, so basically it stops it from corrupting the data because we have to wait a tiny fraction of a second just before they finished just before they start joining sorry so that it doesn't load it before they fully load it's, it's hard to explain but basically it helps a bit of corruption anyway next we're going to drop down and say local save value equals player dot leader stats and then this is going to be the first item you want to save so this is going to be money now we'll say local save value two equals player dot leader stats and this will be the second thing so rebuffs uh, it, now in the future I may do a separate video on saving tools and items but for now this is just gonna be for leader stats saving leader stats okay now below this what we want to do is we're gonna create um, a variable called local get saved which is gonna be equal to the data store colon get async uh, key which we've got up here so we'll put that there and we're going to say if get saved so if get saved is equal to true so if this key actually exists then we'll say save value dot value equals get saved one and then save value two dot value equals get saved two and what this is actually doing is making these values, so the money and the rebirth, equal to their saved value. Else, and as you can see, what we need to do next is create a new table. Now, else, what we're going to do is say local, create a new variable, it's called numbers for saving, equals, and then we're going to do these braces. And this basically allows us to make kind of like a table. So in here we'll say save value dot value and then save value two dot value. And you've got to put a comma after the first one, but not after the second one. I mean just do that for as many as you have. So if you've got three, you'll do comma save value three dot value, etc. And th these by the way, these dot values. Yeah, these dot values must have a capital V and uppercase V. So just bear that in mind. Um, what's left? Uh, so after we've done that, we want to actually... So what this is doing is creating a table of the numbers we need to save. And then we're just going to say, data store, colon, get async. Uh, yeah, and then we'll say, in, we'll put in the key. And then we also want to enter, as you can see down here, the numbers for saving. So numbers for saving, and there we go. Now we've um, basically got an else there. Okay, now after this, after this get a sync, you can see that that's the end of this function, and we just got this left now. Now I'm actually just going to remove this here because you've kind of seen what it looks like now. And this last bit is probably one of the hardest bits to grasp. So that's what we're going to do now. Now underneath this uh, function, we're going to say game.players.playerremoving colon connect function player, PLR. And now this is obviously, all of this code is called once the player leaves the game. So what we're going to say is data store colon set async. And obviously when the player leaves the game, we want them to save the data, we want the, the, the data to be saved. Now what we're going to do is, in this set of sync, we're going to do the... We're actually going to go up to this key here, and you see this uh, user bit? We're going to copy that. It's very important you copy this um, little string in the key. Not this player.userid bit, just this um, string there. And we're going to paste that into this set of sync. And then we're also going to say dot dot plr dot user id. Now, if you wanted, you could literally just copy that whole thing and put it in this bracket. that whole line. There we go. That also works. And then after that, we're going to do a comma. 
while still in the brackets and do braces for another table. I'm going to say plr.leaderstats and then the first thing I want to save, which is money dot value, comma the second thing I want to save, plr.leaderstats dot rebirths dot value. And obviously we don't want anything else, so we don't put another comma. If you do, you put another comma. Anyway, we can clear that. Now that's basically it. So your thing should look something like this. Okay, so now I'll give you some time to double check that. Now we'll go test it. So if we press play. Now this is where you had to enable that setting I showed you at the beginning of the video for this to work. So we've got our money and rebuffs to both equal to zero. Let's click this current client up here. Click players, my name. I'm going to set my money to 50 and my rebirths to 30. And unpause, we see we've got them here. Let's stop the project and reopen. Now, if you didn't enable this set, uh, this setting, no data, state, no data stores will work in your studio project and you'll have to test in the actual game. And as you can see, it's saved. So that works pretty well. Uh, it can be quite buggy when testing it within Studio, so I do recommend you you also go and test it in your actual project. So to do that, you can head over to Chrome, uh, find the project. In my case, it's this one here. I've got a load of old projects here, which I kind of just abandoned, I can't lie. Anyway, yep, so we're going to click on this. And then you just click this green play button and test it. Anyway, other than that, um, that's about it for this video. Now, it's quite difficult to grasp, so if anyone needs any help, just let me know in the comments, and I'll try to reply as quick as I can. So thanks for watching this one, everyone, um, and I hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.